I've been really lucky in, in lockdown, um, craving nature and cra craving sort of a sense of freedom and also wanting to know where my food came from led me to move back to, to Wales and, and to the countryside. And, and you previously you were living in Cardiff? I was in London at the in time, London, yeah. So um, I was living just a very normal city life, I guess, but in lockdown I felt trapped. So I decided to move to the country and, and I had this, this desire to learn how to grow food. And that has just transformed the way, you know, myself and Tom, who's here, um, create our videos. You know, we try and do a, put a story behind the recipes now and where we talk about how people become more self-sufficient or how they can preserve the food. And, you know, I actually feel more of a chef now than I did when I was actually in the kitchen because I actually have respect and love and I know where the food is coming from. But before I just thought of it like a product which is a real shame. And I actually can't wait to have a place where I can serve my homegrown food or even walk people around the farm. Like you guys giving me the tour today. I was like a child in a sweet shop and I bet you felt so proud to, to you know, you were picking up the, the rocket like I've never tasted rocket before in my life, but it was, and it was delicious. And I was so grateful of that. Isn't it amazing, that feeling? Oh, it really is. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I can 100% yeah, yeah. relate yeah. to it. Uh, and what about the, your journey kind of into, because we found a similar one that like, you know, you buy a courgette or you buy a tomato because you're cooking a recipe or creating a recipe and there isn't necessarily that correlation. Like there's almost like a sensitivity or an awareness to, okay, well, how can I move further back the food chain mm. or further back the production chain to kind of go, well, growing it. Growing is there's more of a connection to nature. You're going to feel more connected to yourself and the quality of ingredients. How's that kind of journey been from being a 16 year old, sh yeah. starting in a kitchen starting your YouTube channel and now you've kind of come back home nearly where you're, you're about a homestead nearly. Yeah. It's about, you know, Gaz's homestead yeah. with his chickens and his, you know, your tunnel and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's so much more story now behind everything I do. So, and my recipes in terms of when I'm creating them, it's, it's what do I have on, off, on, on hand to, um, how will I, make this beet shoot shine, for example. And that's fun, creating a story behind, you know, we were just talking before we got on here about I just made a beet shoot pizza, a pizza, I called it. And that was so exciting. Oh, yeah, what can I do with my pizza? My pizza? No, my, what can I do with my beet shoots? Oh, I'll make a pizza. And, and did you make the dough? Like, yes, there's beet in the dough. Yeah, so we made a pink dough and topped it with a, a beet shoot ketchup and then roasted beets on top and then a little Welsh rabbit sauce cheese sauce on top and that was it's so fun so there's a story there and it makes beetroots more exciting so that's really fun but i, I always say is a it's a bit cliche i guess but as my my red my my crop roots grow deeper i found i'm growing deeper to wales and i feel a real connection to to the land so that's beautiful and and you know just i think the the way the world is now um you know it is is there's a lot going on and there's a lot of outside sources distracting us from being happy and present and and i do take on a lot of responsibility and and as you guys know running a business on youtube it, there's a lot a lot of a lot of um a lot goes on behind, lot, yeah exactly it's not just turn on the camera and then there you are there's a lot of lot to do um but when i'm in the garden i'm you know, I'm, I'm miles away. And even if I'm filming in there, it's so, I'm, I'm so at peace. It's, it's the best thing. And now I really want to encourage just as much as to encourage people to eat plant-based, but also just to start growing some food because I realized that I could have done it on my London balcony. I just needed a few buckets and pots. I could have grown, grew quite a lot of food. I was thinking there, like, how has your mental health changed or has it since moving from London back to nature? And like, you can see you're, you're very lit up by, growing vegetables yeah. and getting your hands in the soil in the farm. Like, have you found that your, your own outlook or your mental health has changed for the better or not? Maybe not. Yeah, I think it really has. I think I'm, I'm definitely more comfortable in my skin and, and, um, yeah, it's, it's so tranquil. I, 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 I've, I never like to say I, I, I struggle with mental health back in the day, but now I've, I feel so more clarity in my, in my mind and happy than ever before. And I think a lot of it is to do with finding that purpose in the garden or, or in my land and, and really being proud of the, the content that I'm putting out there. Um, yeah, I definitely feel a lot happier. <laughs> and, and do you think there's a link between the quality? Like, cause if you're growing your own, like there is a very, you've got so much more respect and so much more mm. reverence and appreciation. Cause say I go over to Super Value over there and I buy a courgette, like it's just a courgette. Like, you know, whether I, if I don't use it and it goes off in the fridge, it's not the end yeah. of the world. But when you grow a courgette, 
you've what you've you've grown the seedling. You've what Alessia like, has. Yeah, Alessia has. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, or or if it's down at home, like you know, we used to grow stuff in the house or whatever, yeah. and you'd germinate it, and you'd have it in the, the the windowsill, and then you'd put it out in the garden, and then you know it'd take months. Yeah. It's such a long process that when you got a courgette, it wasn't just a courgette. This was the the trophy at the end of a <laughs> yeah. long journey. So you really wanted to celebrate it. It's yeah. not just a th- so. You're kind of, I think it's more, your whole person is fed rather than just the nutrients which come from the food. Have you found something oh, like yeah. that, that, that? It's yeah. hard to put words articulating it, but it seems, if for us, Supercharge your course. Yeah. It's yeah. Supercharge, like a different yeah. experience that like, you know, there was someone who we talked to that said two of the most primary needs that we have as humans, one is food and one is shelter. Yeah. Food and shelter, two ba- basic primary needs. And a lot of us outsourced food and we've outsourced shelter because we, we rent homes, we buy them and... Therefore, we're looking for meaning, whereas food and shelter, oh, for millions of years, like food and shelter was what we were trying to... Gave us purpose. It, it, gave, it took yeah. 90% of our attention because we yeah. were always looking for food and you were either moving around trying to build shelter or it took you so long to build a shelter. Yeah, there's, there's two things that I think about when it comes to, 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 to growing food. I think anything that is satisfying in our life comes after a bit of struggle. So whether that's like, you know, the high after a run or going in the cold water, you know, it's, it's hard at the time and, it, you know, you don't want to go in there. But after it, you, you're like, thank God I did that. But it's only nice because you've gone through that struggle. And then growing food is like oh, that, that waiting game, that patience for it. And um, so I don't mind, you know, sowing the seeds in, well, I actually can't wait to sow the seeds in January, February and March and know that I'm not going to harvest probably a lot of the food until July, August time. But that's what makes it so exciting and that's why we respect the ingredients so much more and that's why it tastes so much better um and the second thing is i I like i really want to i'm a bit of a control control freak and i think particularly in lockdown and with covid and everything like that sorry i shouldn't have said that because you may get uh, (laughs) i don't know if you're allowed to say the word anymore but um but you know i I just felt like a bit helpless and a, a little bit um like reliance on on like we, I outsourced everything. And I feel like growing food is one of the best ways of becoming self-sufficient. You know, you're, if you can feed yourself and your family then, and, and, and nourishing food, then that is extremely self-sufficient. And one of the hardest things actually to become self-sufficient at. Um, so it's like a, I, I met an amazing farmer in Mexico and he, he called it a silent revolution because it doesn't look like you're, holding a revolution when you just build a raised bed and start harvesting your food from there. But really, you're like saying F you to the, to the, the, sh- the local shop who may be spraying pesticides all over your food. And you're, you're harvesting nourishing food that's going to make you and your family thrive. So it really is a silent revolution because you're just going about your revolution in peace in the garden. So I, I, like, I like that element of of revolution to yeah, growing food. It's nice. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah, it really And is. it gives younger, it's kind of, you know, modern day society, we celebrate technology. It's yeah. like you, Elon Musk, I think we were in the sauna today and Tash was talking about the Starlings, this, oh yeah, the, the satellites that Elon has up in space and so many modern day society celebrates that and big results in farm and farming is old fashioned. But <laughs> yeah. sometimes you see someone like you really make farming look cool and sexy and give yeah. it meaning, give it purpose and make people go, yeah, maybe I can do that. Maybe mm. I should get my hands in the soil. Yeah. I can. Uh, honestly, coming here and seeing, you know, I was so excited to see the veg that you had here and, and learn that it, most of it's from the, the, the farm and then visiting the farm is so inspiring for me because that's exactly what I want to do. And to see you guys doing it is just incredible. And the community aspect that you have here and everyone knows that when they come here, they get in a nourishing bowl of organic, delicious food that's just grown down the road. I think what you're doing in this community and the reach that you have on social media is like extremely powerful and revolutionary. So it's amazing what you guys are doing. And is, is that the dream that you'd love to have a farm to kind of table restaurant, that type of thing? Is that? Yeah. So over the years, my, my plans of having a restaurant has changed and, you know, with three Michelin stars. <laughs> when, that when you after, you, after you finished playing rugby for Wales. Yeah. <laughs> I still hold on to that dream. No, I don't think it'll happen now, but um, anyways, um, yeah, so initially when I was in the kitchens, that was the dream. Have a restaurant, you know, traditional, in the city maybe. When I left the industry, I thought, bloody hell, I couldn't do that again. Working in those kitchens is too tough. It's too much of a, uh, a hard environment. And obviously so many restaurants fail, don't they? It's, it's, it's a hard game. Um, 
but now living in the countryside, um, well, actually prior to that, when I had my audience and I was living in London, I thought, okay, yeah, maybe I could open a restaurant in London. I've got this audience. They've been asking me to open a restaurant for so long and I'm, re- I'm keen to serve my food. But then since leaving the city and, and starting to grow my food, there's, I need a farm next to my restaurant. I need literally, I want to walk my guests around the farm. Then they come into the restaurant. But then I was thinking, oh, but then I don't want to be like, I don't want it to to be a real solid graft of, you know, 80 hour weeks and, you know, 60 people a night, you know, it's tough. I don't want to put, put my staff through that. And I want it to be a bit more calm and tranquil in the kitchen. So my big plan, I haven't shared this with many people because, um, top secret guys. Well, it's, no, it's fine. <laughs> I actually want to put it out there more because I'm going to need a lot of help with it. And I'm sometimes kind of scared to ask for help. Um, I, I always overthink that, you know, I'm a, I'm a burden, but I really, I want some help with it. Um, so I'm going to put it out there. Basically, I want to start an eco retreat centered around a farm um, where I rewild a lot of the land, a uh, big market garden in the center, cabins where people can come and stay and, and a restaurant on site where um, I only sort of serve the, the people that are staying at the retreat and they have a real experience. So they're not just coming for dinner, but they're coming there for a five day wellness escape to nature retreat where they can help me on the farm, pick the food and then we go and cook it in the night. We do farm co- uh, lessons and cooking lessons and we go and hiking up the local Welsh mountains and foraging in the woods and just a real amazing place where people can come to escape. So that's the, the major goal. And I think being able to cook for less people in a more intimate setting each evening, um, well, then maybe I could get a Michelin style because I'm not going to be running around like a headless chicken. And how involved in the actual day-to-day stuff I uh, um, will I be? I'm not sure at this stage, but I would like to be living there uh, and, and really sort of hands-on. Probably it would be hard to pull me away from the garden and into the kitchen. I, I don't know, we'll see, but... Um, that's the major plan and then just using that space as a a community hub just like you've got here this is amazing to see you know knowing that you have your regulars over 20 years and people like I said before coming in for a nourishing bowl of food as much as it will be a sort of closed retreat I want to make sure that the local community schools and kids can come and learn and it'll be the center of everything I do in terms of the the show on YouTube as well or maybe if we could get a, a sort of TV deal as well it would take the pressure off (laughs) <laughs> planning that side of things as well so yeah that's the major plan but sometimes i feel like i just want to quit everything and go live off grid and be a little bit of a hermit <laughs> so that's nice. i think, I think everyone can relate to that yeah 